Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Solars and here is your detailed weather forecast update nationwide for Tuesday, May 27th, 2025. This is another big video coming your way, a lot to get through. Plenty of detail on rainfall occurring up in the northwest of Western Australia, severe weather expected across the southwest of Western Australia, a powerful low pressure system moving through South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania, and what's expected to become a significant low pressure system into the Tasman Sea through the next couple of days. All of the details on those weather systems, plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. So if you're brand new to the channel, please you can consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things this morning with the current severe weather picture through South Australia, Victoria, Tasmania, and parts of New South Wales. Well, there is a bit of good news here. The severe weather threat has eased off. Severe weather warnings are pretty much everywhere being cancelled, apart from a small damaging wind warning covering parts of the Flinders Ranges north of Adelaide. But last night was a wild one. Yesterday, in its entirety, was a wild one for South Australia. Massive wind gusts reported pretty much everywhere. Neptune Island taken away with the strongest wind gusts at 128 kilometres now early yesterday morning. Significant wind gusts ongoing through yesterday afternoon as well with Adelaide backs now with wind gusts between 80 to 90 kilometres an hour being a pretty frequent occurrence after about midday out into the late evening. Uh, it is a good thing that those winds have now eased off and I'm sure pretty much everybody across t uh, coastal parts of South Australia will be able to testify that this is probably the strongest cold front that they've had in the past five years. And certainly some good rainfall came out of it as well. It's, uh, we didn't expect this to be a rain-making cold front or a rain-making weather system, but we had some falls between 20 to 40 millimetres through the Adelaide Metro and falls up to 50 millimetres into the Mount Lofty Ranges outside of Adelaide. So falls slightly better than what we expected. Unfortunately, rainfall accumulations didn't even crack 20 millimetres along the Eyre Peninsula and they seldom cracked 15 or 20 millimetres across the southeast parts of South Australia and very little rainfall to report in Victoria as well. This was a very, very dry weather system, uh, quite unusual for this time of the year when we're talking about a cold front with this amount of power coming through. It was a very, very dry weather system. So again, highly unusual for this time of the year. The low pressure system itself is now moving into the southern parts of the Tasman Sea, and it really is beginning to churn itself up in a pretty significant fashion here. There is a ship just towards the south of where the main low pressure system is situated right now, and that's reporting wind observations of about 70 kilometers now coming out of the east. So if I was on that ship, I'd get myself out of there willy-nilly. But at this point in time, it does get uh, go to show how strong this cold front is it kind of uh, superimposed itself from the Great Australian Bight over to the Tasman Sea, so it kind of skipped Tasmania and parts of Victoria. It just thrashed South Australia and then merged into another weather, weather system. It was a bit confusing, actually, into the southern parts of the Tasman Sea. A very quick-moving storm, that's for sure. And now it's meeting up with some moisture that it's dragging down from southwestern Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales, where there have been some falls overnight into the northeast of New South Wales. They weren't really discussed. I didn't discuss them in yesterday's video, but they haven't been significant falls between 10 to 30 millimetres have been pretty widespread around the Moree and the Tamworth area overnight, but non-significant rainfall accumulations moving into flood impacted areas of the north, uh, mid north coast. This moisture here meeting up with this low pressure system is going to result in a process, and you're not going to like to hear this, bomb cyclogenesis, which is a term that we use when a low pressure system explosively intensifies in an extratropical fashion. So this is what we uh, call uh, extratropical cyclones or frontal systems when they intensify very, very quickly. And just have a look at what this system here is about to do. So currently with a pressure of 995 millibars and throughout the remainder of today, it's going to rapidly deepen. Tonight, we're looking at a pressure of 986 millibars. And then through early tomorrow morning, it's going to continue to intensify into a pressure into the high 970s or low 980s. That is a very, very strong frontal system for the Tasman Sea and the southern parts of the Tasman Sea. That, that is a very, very strong system indeed and likely to present uh, New Zealand with a whole host of severe weather impacts, which I will get to in just a hot second. In terms of the impacts for the Australian coastline, it's the sheer magnitude of this system here that's resulting in impacts to the Australian coastline, even though this is going to be a New Zealand concern here. Damaging winds expected to continue there, still occurring right now on Hogan Island with winds sustained at 80 kilometres an hour, gusting to 110. But we are expecting brief periods of damaging wind gusts to develop along uh, the extreme eastern parts of the Victorian coastline around Malakuta and then up through the southeast corners of New South Wales along the coastlines there. So up north of Malakuta through Bega, Bateman Spain, and then about as far north as Wollongong or even Sydney. And we could be seeing some hazardous surf conditions once again arising through Wednesday and into Thursday. So tomorrow and into Thursday along the New South Wales southeast coast and extending up in towards the metro and the Hunter regions as well. Significant wave heights will be about four or five metres and we're not expecting apocalyptic weather conditions. It certainly isn't an east coast low thrashing the New South Wales coastline, that's for sure. But we could still see some relatively significant and potentially severe weather as well. So this is certainly something to be keeping in the back of your head at this point in time. 
But yeah, an absolute wild system for New Zealand, that's for sure. It does weaken a little bit through uh, Thursday afternoon and evening as it approaches the North Island, but it is expected to bring some very, very serious wind gusts to the North Island and also the South Island as well. By the way, I've been looking at sustained winds on this map here. Normally to kind of grapple with the severity of a cold front, I look at wind gusts, but this is just sustained winds. The wind gusts are absolutely mind-bending here from this low-pressure system and likely to be a lot stronger than this as well uh, once they get themselves over New Zealand up to 125 kilometers an hour through Wednesday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, and into tomorrow evening. And like I said, those pretty serious wind gusts extending right across to the New South Wales coastline as well, 70 or to 80 kilometers an hour along the coastline, and then just offshore, you're going to be pushing 90 to 100 kilometers an hour in places. Likely to be some significant wind gusts as well in elevated regions into the high country around New South Wales and Victoria, but that's nothing unusual for this time of the year. At this point in time, there's no massive threat to the New South Wales or the Victorian coastline or even the east coast of Tasmania, but it's certainly is something to keep in the back of your head and marine based activities from this point onwards again if you couldn't tell with the way the weather is presenting itself through victoria and tasmania especially today are uh, strongly discouraged through today tomorrow and into thursday where the conditions should fine up on thursday as a high pressure system builds in the great australian bite and the return to cool calm dry and collected weather begins on friday but yes yeah, certainly a brute of a front that's for sure this is going to be a very very strong system and it is making the most of some very warm sea temperatures uh into the tasman sea and it has made the most of those warm sea temperatures into the Great Australian Bight as well. And just to illustrate the fact that this system's not going to be a big impactor for the Australian mainland, there's hardly any rainfall in the forecast of the southeast of Australia. A few drops here and there through the Gippsland region of New South Wales and maybe a drop or two of rainfall into the high country around New South Wales and Victoria, but significant rainfall accumulations or any rainfall accumulations for that matter not expected around New South Wales or much of Victoria. Now, where do we go to from here? We can go to the rainfall up in the north or the rainfall for Queensland. I think we'll go to the rainfall up in the northwest of Western Australia, but I will get to the rainfall in Queensland because this ties up uh, to the rainfall in the northwest of Western Australia, and we've got that coming through in the next couple of days as well. So just bear with me for a couple of minutes if Western Australia isn't your cup of tea. I'll leave a link in the description to skip forward to the Queensland side of things. But some relatively serious rainfall accumulations, especially for this time of the year, have made their way into the northwest of Western Australia with 110 millimetres in the last 20 24 hours at Broome, 100 millimetres of that coming overnight, and falls between 50 and 110 millimetres occurring across a wide swathe of the northwest of Western Australia through the Kimberley and into parts of the Pilbara region. Rainfall accumulations haven't resulted in flooding yet, key word there yet. There will be some big puddles around the Broome city area today, and likely some pretty big puddles and some pretty slushy roads as you uh, head between Broome out towards Fitzroy Crossing, and even out towards Halls Creek, there's been some relatively significant rainfall accumulations out there as well. The good news is rainfall and thunderstorms will Will slowly ease off throughout the remainder of today and they're going to be crawling slowly towards the east as well so heavy falls will continue into the Kimberley region throughout the remainder of today and into early tomorrow morning but rainfall contracting towards the border uh, through tonight and into tomorrow morning and then over the border through the northern territory and weakening off pretty much holistically speaking through Wednesday and into Thursday and the rainfall pretty much completely clearing out of Western Australia and the northern territory through tomorrow night and into early Thursday morning further rainfall accumulations aren't expected to be anything too crazy triple figure rainfall accumulations still possible around the Northern Territory, uh, West Australian border, and we could be seeing some heavy falls around Twin Hills Village, Kintour, Docker River, uh, and then in, inland towards Tai Tree, and falls as high as 50 millimetres expected around the Alice Springs area. Rainfall hasn't made it to Alice Springs yet in a significant capacity. Uh, it's just kind of drizzly stuff at this point in time, but we expect rainfall accumulations and rainfall rates around the Alice and then further north, especially up towards Tai Tree, Docker River, and Kintour to really begin to pick up over the next couple of hours. Let me know how the roads hold up in this part of the Northern Territory as well. Well, if you've got any intel on it, feel free to flick me a message over on Facebook or an email. My link is in the channel uh, description. I'd be very keen to know what the roads do uh, look like uh, in the next couple of days across this part of Western Australia and into the Northern Territory. So I'll be travelling there late in June. Uh, let's talk about that rainfall for Queensland. Now, there is a little bit on the cards, and we do actually have to talk about this because it is going to be coming through for some flood-impacted areas, but hopefully the icing on the cake here is some rainfall for the central Queensland coastline. Fingers crossed. They haven't had much rainfall this wet season, and the areas around Rockhampton are kind of the only areas that haven't been underwater at some point in 2025 so far across Queensland. Uh, we do have a little bit of rainfall coming through. We're expecting the moisture that's going to be streaming through Western Australia and the Northern Territory uh, today from the mid-levels to make it into the uh, central part 
parts of Queensland through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Light falls expected somewhere between 5 to 25 millimetres, nothing over 30 millimetres can be expected, especially through flood impacted areas of southwestern Queensland and they're now beginning to dry out as to where 30 millimetres of rainfall isn't a major concern for these areas. Uh, and we're looking at rainfall then contracting pretty much completely to the Queensland coastline through Friday morning, where it could get quite heavy at times. Now, I'm not exactly sure what to make of this, but I do see that we're going to be seeing some kind of coastal trough and low pressure activity along the central Queensland coastline, which is going to lead to kind of the halting and the convergence of rainfall and moisture coming in from the Coral Sea and sliding in from the mid levels, which is going to result in some very slow moving, heavy rain bands developing somewhere along the central Queensland coastline. Now, the beauty of a forecast like this is we know absolutely nothing about it, the exact whereabouts of where this rainfall is going to be coming through. And again, for Queensland, of course, make the forecast for us difficult. It isn't going to be a blob of rainfall. It's going to be bands of rainfall coming in from the coastline or sweeping in from the northwest. And it's going to be very slow moving rainfall. So if you get yourself under one of those rain bands, we could be looking at triple figure rainfall accumulations. If you fail to get yourself under one of those rain bands, rainfall accumulations won't be as heavy uh, for this part of, uh, or for your location around Queensland. So we will have to wait and see exactly what rainfall is expected and I imagine the convective forecast models are going to come in clutch here uh, showcasing us exactly where the rainfall is expected through Thursday and into Friday. So this is a forecast where I'm going to be saying we're expecting this type of rainfall here but again it's not the rainfall that I'm going to be saying panic about or start making preparations for at this point in time. 100 millimetres doesn't really phase much of Queensland and in fact as you get the further north you get 100 millimetres unless you in 2025 March uh, it isn't enough to flood a drain pipe conventionally so we're not looking at concerning rainfall accumulations coming through but again I'm going to wait till Thursday or Friday to comment on exactly what rainfall is coming through for exactly what locations. Falls, generally speaking, right now could be between 50 to 125 millimetres for locations south of Mackay through West Hill, Serena, Ogmore, Rockhampton, Yapoon, down towards Agnes Water and Bundaberg and into the northern reaches of the Sunshine Coast, with some heavy falls coming in from a convergent zone into the southeast of Queensland through Saturday and into Sunday. Again, that's a bit of a hot take at this point in time and a forecast that we'll have to revisit at a later date. And then more Tasman Sea trouble as we get out towards early June, but we expect that for this time of the year. And just to wrap this forecast update up and probably make you feel really cold and shivery, let's talk about the southwest of Western Australia. Brutally cold once again this morning. Perth has been saved by some winds coming out of the east, but Collie East certainly hasn't been saved by that. Minus one there, zero degrees at Bridgetown, and it is very, very cold across a wide swathe of Western Australia, southwest. Not unseasonably cold, but we have been dunked from getting uh, 12 degree minimums overnight to now zero degree minimums overnight. So it has been a pretty sharp spike into the cold at this point in time. Cold front activity is building and some pretty serious rainfall accumulations are going to come in with this rainfall here. So we're expecting some showers to begin developing as a cold front uh, starts to move into the southwest of Western Australia along the mid north coast up into the Murchison and the Gascoyne regions through Thursday and some rainfall could be heavier times again more mid-level moisture streaming in from the very warm Indian Ocean at this point in time and that's going to lead to some showers and some isolated pockets of heavy rainfall through Thursday through like I said the Gascoyne and the Murchison before the main frontal band arrives and drags this moisture inland and further towards the south on Friday. Significant rainfall accumulations aren't expected but falls between 10 to 25 millimetres throughout the southwest corner with isolated falls up to 40 millimetres expected into some of the hilly areas through Friday night and into Saturday morning. Showers continuing through Saturday morning it will be a little bit brighter on Sunday with not too much rainfall expected until we get out towards Sunday evening and then end towards Monday morning the main cold front arrives and this one here will pack a punch. This will be very strong indeed with a low pressure centre of 990 millibars moving quite far north and in fact it's just offshore from Augusta and uh, Margaret River at this point point in time uh, this cold front here will very very much pack a bit of a punch through Monday and into Tuesday and it's going to be a long-lived weather event as well showers finally clearing through Thursday and into Friday and as a high pressure ridge builds and then you know it we're in winter now it'll be cold fronts every couple of days after that but yeah the forecast model is really bullish on the rainfall accumulations and if we do get a cold front especially a slow moving one through Sunday Monday and Tuesday basically sitting offshore from the West Australian coastline funneling rainfall ashore we will end up with some pretty serious rainfall accumulations so this is certainly something to be worrying about well, not worrying about right now, but keeping in the back of your head that we might have some relatively serious rainfall accumulations coming through. Falls between 10 to 50 millimetres expected through the gas coin and the Murchison. Falls as high as 80 millimetres possible from rainfall coming through uh, on Thursday and Friday, and then once again through Sunday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday into the uh, areas just north of Geraldton and Calberry. And then the big time falls between 100 to 150 millimetres expected south of Durian Bay through the Perth metro area, especially through the hills down Mandra, Bunbury, Bustleton, Margaret River, Augusta Way, 
uh, significant rainfall accumulations are possible there with slow moving heavy shower bands moving through as this cold front begins to pump them ashore through Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. A kind of long lived weather event that's for sure. Again it does look like the forecast models are a little bit uh, unsure on what to exactly expect at this point in time so this will be something that we re revisit again at a later point in time but yeah rainfall coming through Thursday and Friday a couple of days or a couple of hours of dry weather through Saturday and into Sunday or Saturday night into Sunday and then that big cold front comes through Monday and Tuesday and that's expected to be a pretty wild one that's for sure. In terms of wind accumulations we've had some flip-flopping forecasts between getting a very severe front in terms of wind speeds but at this point in time it doesn't look like it's going to be anything too crazy. Wind speeds could be up around the 100 kilometer an hour mark across the southwest capes and between 60 and 70 kilometers an hour for the Perth metro area. It will be a big front but again it does really depend on what your class is a big front here on the terms of wind speeds and wave heights it isn't expected to be anything crazy but we could be seeing some heavy force out of it and again that will be talk for another forecast update when we know exactly what rainfall is going to be coming through for what locations. Anyways, that is going to be all that I have time for today. Of course, a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And a massive thank you to all of the support recently on the channel as well. We've not only hit 40,000, but also 41,000 followers here and rapidly approaching 42,000 as well. So thank you so much to all of the heartwarming support and the nice messages in the comments as well and all of the support on the Facebook page. Just make sure you go and check that out. There'll be a link in the description as well. Special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. That is all for me today. And we'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.